Welcome to the session. Uh, deploy a SQL Server VM on Azure with PowerShell. Um, like Randolph already said, uh, I'm actually deaf. So uh, if you might have a, a hearing impairment as well, there's a possibility within Microsoft Teams to, to switch on the, 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 the live captions. You can find the three dots uh, in upper right of Microsoft Teams, and you can, if you want, and you need it uh, to turn on the live captions. So just a, a little bit about me, that have actually already introduced me very kindly, and thank you for having me here today. Um, well, I just want to pick some few stuff here that as I have been already introduced to that I have a bionic ears, I wear a cochlear implant, so I'm really deaf, so, uh, so basically I really can't hear anything without uh, the cochlear implants, which are especially hearing devices, basically. Um, I'm also an organizer of Tetabash.live, basically it's a, it's a new conference, uh, uh, which I'm organizing with other peoples that is coming on September 10th. And I'm, like I said, I'm living here in Zurich in Switzerland, and I really love to travel and meet other cultures. If you should have any questions, um, you can contact me through this ways. And also the code that I'm publish here basically is also on GitHub. So you can actually also um, get this the code from there. So, what are we going to learn today? We will create a virtual machine on Azure with PowerShell. So it's basically something that is automated. We have uh, basically uh, infrastructure as, as code. Uh, that way, we will create a CQ connection to the VM via TSL, SSL. We will see how uh, this is done. We will install software on the VM via PowerShell as well. And we will have uh, some words uh, on pricing. This also depends how fast we can get through the slides. First, I want to, to tell you uh, why we want to do it that way. It's basically it's, uh, just to, to get to the, um, the, the reason for it. And uh, then I'm going to show you the architecture, security, and actually the code and the tools that uh, um, we are going to use for this kind of deployment. I'm also going to show you a demo. The demo is basically a video. This is a recorded video, basically, that I'm going to show you because the actual deployment takes about one hour. So what I did, I recorded it once, basically, and just cut the most interesting parts together so we don't have to wait a full hour until it's done, or perhaps if, if there will be uh, a mishap that we have to restart and stuff like that. So we have a bit more security, but also it gets a bit easier and uh, faster to go through. So why would we want to automate VM deployments? Uh, infrastructure as code means basically also we have the same setup easily again, we, we can reuse the code. We have basically uh, something that we can really um, uh, do over and over again, basically. We yeah, also could delete the environment, for example, the development environment, if, if you need this for some reason. We just can delete it because we have it in code and just uh, use it. We can also use it for testing, or we also could use it for, for um, showcasing. Let's say if you have a customer that you want to show uh, something, and the customer maybe wants to uh, play around the, the, with the VM because uh, the, the, just to test about, uh, to test with, with this VM something, then you can just do the, the, the deployment and delete it again, basically. So uh, infrastructure as a code really means you have a more easy and usable uh, ability to, to, to reuse the, the, the VM exactly as before was before, basically. It also can be a way to save costs or to, to comply with the install recreations. Um, if, why are you saving costs? Because uh, if you can delete the VM, basically, uh, you can also be careful about it because uh, as long as you don't use the, the, the VM, basically, 
you don't pay for the CPU, for example, for RAM. So, 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 so you only pay for the infrastructure that you really are using for the moment. So now you also could ask, but yeah, why PowerShell not, for example, uh, something else? Uh, one reason is PowerShell is a native tool provided by Microsoft. Uh, PowerShell is also something that many table administrators already use, basically. So it's basically it's a kind of natural to use for the TPS, actually. Um, we have also the possibility to use uh, uh, Azure Resource Manager, something JSON uh, structure that, that you can use and uh, um, uh, yeah, let's say deploy it. But uh, as you will see the next slide, it's, it's quite complicated to use because it's not really human friendly. Another alternative is biceps, but it is uh, very uh, different than own language. But it's uh, certainly the future because Microsoft uh, also de uh, developed a bicep, which is actually a so-called uh, transpiler of the decorative language because it's um, basically to um, explain uh, uh, Azure with uh, this language what you want to achieve. You don't really uh, use it like a normal language that is basically uh, iterative like PowerShell is so to really say, to tell um, the code what it has to be done if, if step for step, but it's actually something very different. Um, so it's it's, um, it's not natural for people like me who are not so much in DevOps or the infrastructure as a code. I'm, I'm actually a BI engineer, so a data engineer and less in, in the infrastructure, infrastructure side. So um, the power release is a great reason for it. However, this is not a, uh, a solution that is for a huge deployment. If you want to maybe deploy uh, forms, then uh, of course, biceps or let's say Terraform, uh, for example, uh, that are tools that really are developed for such kind of cases. So uh, PowerShell is a screw that you can, yes, you can also uh, uh, deploy several uh, deployments, of course, so that's also possible. But uh, if I really uh, was an engineer on the infrastructure, infrastructure side, probably I would go to uh, with biceps or, or Terraform. I promise to to show you what the ORM looks like. You see, it's basically just a, 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 a small example by Microsoft here. Basically, and it gets computed extremely quickly, and it's not really readable for for humans. Basically, so it's, uh, you can also check it here. Basically, and see this. Um, it's not something you really want to work with. So. Um, just a forward, what are we going to do infrastructure, uh, architecture wise, basically? We have a uh, architecture wise, we have basically on Azure, we have uh, uh, several options how we can deploy things. Um, usually, in most cases, people think about something that's like this Azure SQL database or the Azure Bench instance or so platform as a service. Um, and uh, maybe also edge contributing, but what we are going to, to look at today is really infrastructure as a service today, which is oftentimes not, um, this is oftentimes overlooked basically, because it's actually still an option. Of course, um, the platform as a service is probably going to be the future. But if you have uh, a case, for example, you want to have 100% uh, SQL Server compatibility because you have a framework you want to bring into the cloud, for example, or you want to have really full control on the operating system and SQL Server label for some reason, or if you want to have a hybrid availability disaster, you want to, to use older software, for example. So this uh, could also be reasons to why you still want to use, uh, use VMs. So uh, um, VMs, uh, I think, still have today still have a, um, a, a reasoning to, to be in ex existence. So yeah. So how does it look like if you have a, a VM? Basically, we have uh, with the VM we, we have basically uh, a first a resource group basically. And the resource group is basically just a grouping mechanism where you put the old uh, uh, 
uh, objects you, you need inside, which are all, for example, managed disks, uh, where, where, which are, or also the, the virtual networks, uh, the subnets, uh, the VM itself, uh, the operating system, and uh, public IP address, uh, what, what not. So those are all objects. Now, if you have a resource group and you maybe want to use uh, uh, to move, uh, for example, to your VM uh, with uh, you, um, uh, all the other objects from, let's say, uh, Zurich to Canada, then you just have to, 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 to move the resource group and not every single object itself. So it's, it's, this is really handy. Also, if you want to, to copy or delete uh, your VM, basically, or to your, the whole group, basically, so you can delete the whole group and you have it already. So it's, so it's, it's really uh, just a grouping mechanism. And we have also a virtual network, which we also will talk about quickly later. Um, this, this is also quite crucial because, of course, you want to have your VM secured. We have basically what we have a problem basically is that we have an internet with the internet to be the public IP address. I will also show you how we can address that. Um, so. How do we bring uh, the backups into uh, the VM? You might be asking that we, well, there are several ways, but one of the easier ways is basically just to use basically the, uh, the Azure File Storage uh, Explorer, which you can download from the Microsoft here for free, basically. It's basically just uh, something like, it looks like a file explorer. Uh, that is a bit uh, inspired by uh, that was code, uh, Visual Studio code. Basically, you just can then drag and drop the the the, um, the, um, the, the database. So we have uh, the, the storage and then on our uh, file storage uh, uh, file storage. Uh, um, oh, on the uh, file storage, uh, uh, yeah, uh, space where you actually also can map uh, uh, your hard drive to basically, and you also can share it to many virtual machines you, if you want to. So you, the, 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 the file storage is basically just a space where you can uh, uh, store uh, your backups, for example. It's, it's also pretty cheap. Um, yeah, like I said before here, um, we have to, to take care of the public IP address. And just, this is actually something we, we should really address because the uh, RTP over the internet is, is kind of risky. We, we don't want to, to, to uh, act, um, access on the VM via RTP because um, if you do that, you expose your public IP address, which also means you actually uh, get the, uh, into the risk of having a DDoS attack because uh, there are actually uh, people that can ports for, for RTP uh, uh, ports. So what you should do is basically just also hide uh, the, the, the public IP address. So you actually uh, can do that with the Azure Bastion for security, which is quite easy to set up. You also actually could also use not Azure Bastion, but this is now what I'm going to show you. The other way would be that you would actually have a VPN, uh, that, uh, so, so you could make a tunnel to, to, towards uh, to, to your VM, basically. But then you really need to know how this is done. You really have to, to have uh, the, the people also have to um, the, the, the know how, basically. Also, the the, the means and have a, a, a provider that's it. Can be done for, for you basically, but here with the Azure Bastion basically is 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 something that's really managed by Microsoft and it's, you could say it's basically secret as a service actually. Actually, it works just with the browser. Um, I will show you exactly how does this, this work like. Uh, the RTP gets that way then tunneled with the DSL SSL. So that way also the public address is not going to be exp exposed. Yeah. At this point, are there any questions? There are no questions at this stage. Okay, great. Okay, so with the Azure, uh, the Azure actually with the Azure Bastion looks like this. We have basically uh, the Azure portal. Do so you go basically with the browser to Azure portal and to uh, go to, to uh, 
basically to the VM where you want to connect to, and uh, there is actually uh, a button that asks you how you want to connect it, and you just uh, uh, select instead of auto P basically just uh, as a bastion, then you get actually forwarded to, to within a new browser to the as a bastion host. And that's how that you actually can uh, connect with the VM. So the connection also, the, the, the what you see basically, uh, the, the VM basically is, is in the browser. So you see the, 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 the RTP desktop in the browser. So the code I'm going to show you is basically 100 lines long. Of course, I'm not going to all of the, the uh, every single line of the of the code. That would be too much. But I will show you the the the, the, the most important uh, things. Um, so you can adapt it yourself. I will show you how you can adapt it. The, the code I published uh, to to your own needs for, for Canada. Um, I will show you how to browse the objects, so you actually also can uh, find the objects uh, that you might want to use. Um, everything is basically done from the desktop in Visual Studio Code. So what uh, uh, the, the code itself is, is actually just uh, was done on my own computer uh, locally, uh, just have to connect. Uh, the uh, the to the code we connect as an account and uh, you have to, to select the account you want to use and then you actually can actually uh, really do the, the, the connection so yeah but first uh, we we have to to, to uh, decide what location we want to have and here in this example i use this with north but i like i told you I will show you how to browse this to find the, the location for your needs, basically. Um, I'm going to demo that uh, a bit. Uh, also, the, uh, the, give you the, just the resource group a name, like I told you before, it's just a grouping mechanism. Here is a conference lab. Uh, and uh, I have a, a storage, basically, it's the, the cheapest storage here for, for a, 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 just an example, basically. Um, I'm not going to too much into network stuff because I'm not uh, too experienced in this uh, myself either. But I just wanted to point out this year, if I set it this fixed in here because um, you shouldn't really change this because uh, the, um, the as a bastion is kind of of uh, thickly uh, with this. Uh, you only have uh, very few ranges, I think, uh, uh, from 27 to uh, 30 uh, or 33 around that. Um, but then the, you have to really match it uh, with the other stuff we have. So basically, we have uh, the address prefix here uh, of 27, basically. Um, I would advise you not to change this because I stumbled on, on this myself and lost some hours uh, because I thought uh, it would be an idea to change it a bit. Um, the VM size here, I'm going to, to, to use it just a standard T4 T, T as a V3, but that exactly means I'm also going to show you later with the pricing detection so you also understand what kind of options you have for, for the VM size. So, as a set, as a settings of, for the SQL Server license, what I'm going to use basically is SQL Server 2019 with a win, on the Windows uh, 2019 with a, with a um, the SQL Server developer edition. And that's the uh, version I picked, the, the latest. So what uh, we want to do is at first, as I told you, we, we can actually uh, browse the objects we, we want. And if you want to get the objects for Canada, for example, you can just uh, say, I want to get a, a, a set location where object, and like this, so, so, uh, I can get the, the Canada, uh, so you can look for Canada, basically. When, uh, what I, uh, it gets me out, it leads me out is basically Canada Central and Canada East, which uh, also on the website by Microsoft is basically uh, described what exactly means, what, uh, what kinds of uh, um, possibilities we have here. Also, you also can do that in code if you want to. So, so if you really want to, to know uh, what kind of options you have in code, then uh, every single detail, and this is just a, um, 
uh, basically a, a snippet from the whole uh, list you can get with this. there are the hundreds of, of different kind of, of services you can uh, browse that, that way. Uh, you, of course, you also could uh, search uh, with uh, just, uh, similarly like here before with a, uh, with a like a display name basically uh, like before you just come to find out uh, of if this, this kind of service you need or you want um, for this is specific location exists or not. Likewise, you also can uh, find out uh, if the, the, the VM size you want uh, is available to, to you. Uh, for example, for the central, uh, here I picked basically, uh, I wanted to say uh, 16 cores and uh, uh, at least 16 cores and uh, maximum 32 cores and um, uh, memory of RAM of at least 64 gigabyte and uh, maximum of uh, um, 120 gigabyte. So basically, you also can look for it. You basically also could do it uh, uh, with a configurator that uh, Microsoft actually uh, gives to you. But if you really want to do it in uh, as a infrastructure as a code, this is a bit easier to do because you get the names and to, to, to know uh, what kind of of uh, objects you need to, to use so to get uh, exactly the the the, the, the view sizes you, you actually want. This is again just a, a snippet of a quite long list you could pick from. And like I said before, I will show you uh, in the pricing section what this, this actually means. Here we have uh, this uh, uh, an overview of the, of this. We see here if there's a B, for example, B, D, this is D, or basically what, the, what I was showing you before. We have uh, a general purpose. This is what I basically uh, was uh, showing before this, uh, that I'm going to de deploy. This is this is just a general purpose. So you actually could, could pretty much also use it for, for production. And um, it starts about um, yeah. Around forty dollars per month, basically. Uh, just keep in mind, this is a, this uh, price it might have changed ever since uh, August eighteen. Um, that's when I uh, compiled this list. But just to give you a rough feeling on of uh, what kind of prices you might face, is this is the overview here? So you can really go from uh, roughly three dollars per, per month to up to uh, like uh, sixteen thousand uh, dollars per month. So. Be a bit careful what you want to deploy for. <laughs> you also can find uh, the, this list here with the actual prices, but uh, um, unfortunately, it's, it's not that um, like easy to, to find out the prices like it, it is here. But uh, like I said before, Microsoft also has a, an application, a web application that guides you a bit easier to, to the prices. But still, um, I think this is a, um, the easiest overview uh, I've seen so far. This is uh, my own compiled list, basically. So um, let's get back to the image offers you can get, basically. What we, you actually can see is that we have Yes, uh, this uh, Randolph actually also uh, published it now in the chat uh, a link. This is exactly what I was talking about. So uh, what this list basically is just uh, the offerings that, that Microsoft has. Uh, for example, you could uh, pick, uh, let's say, uh, Red Hat also SQL Server 2017 on a Red Hat other uh, addition to, to, to on Linux basically Ubuntu Linux. That's basically what you can pick. This is really uh, from the the the, the, the market what you, you can, can pick from. So it's basically the, the, uh, uh, an image that you can, can pick directly from uh, provided by Microsoft. So you don't have to install everything. Everything is, is uh, um, from the start, from scratch. So, but you just can pick from this. For the sake of the demo, I picked uh, SQL Server 2019 on uh, Windows Server 2019. And they already see basically there's even uh, SQL Server 2019 ready and with the Windows Server 2020. It's also available already. So 
um, we also have the possibility to to depict SQ that means a uh, kind of addition of, of SQL Server we want, basically. And here we are going to to, to, to depict a SQL Server Developer Edition. We also could uh, use the uh, SQL Server Developer Edition uh, Generation 2. This is also a possibility, which is, uh, as far as I know, basically just uh, a, a new, a relatively new VM with the, the uh, a better offering for uh, um, better loads. Okay, uh, right. Any questions here so far? No questions yet. Okay, great. On the VM, once you actually uh, deploy the VMs, what you can do is uh, um, to map the network drive, and this is basically code. This is just a standard code for uh, the PowerShell, to, to, so you can actually map the 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 the, 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 the uh, network drive. The file store is basically file store is basically just a store for uh, files on on Azure, and so that is like I said before, uh, mappable. And after that, uh, um, I would uh, inst install Chocolati, which actually uh, gives me the ability to really just uh, automatically install software that I want. You can actually uh, pick a software from a huge library of software, and uh, you really can just uh, put a one line of uh, to install of a lot of software. Uh, this way, basically, well, this is the, how you install inst Chocolati. And uh, this way, basically, you can uh, say, for example, uh, uh, I want to install uh, um, Chocolate GUI, Microsoft Edge, the browser, the blog editor, Dark Studio, Azure the Data Studio, Kate, the, I'll just uh, say the dash Y, basically, for yes, so that you want to install it, and then you can uh, walk away from computer, and this stuff gets uh, installed automatically, basically. You can do that with a lot of software, including SQL Server, basically. But if you have, uh, if you want to install a SQL Server, then you uh, might order SSRS in this case. Then uh, you need to pass along some more parameters, which is also possible. Uh, for example, also, you could also say, talk uh, install Power BI, yes. This is also a possibility. If you want to upgrade software, this is also very easy. You can just type in basically Joker outdated, and you will see basically uh, a list of what could be updated. Uh, it also says, it tells you, for example, if something is pinned, here it's false. Now, pin means just I want to have this version, I can keep this version, even though I'm saying Joker uh, upgrade all of the that's why, which means I want to upgrade all software, but if the software is pinned, then the software won't, won't uh, be upgraded. So this is a very easy way to to control the, the version you have, basically. If you want to use a, a graphical user face, you also can do that, and you also see it basically uh, very easily um, how, um, what kind of software you have. And here it is for altered, which is determined and means just outdated. So you have a very easy overview on the software as well. So uh, I'm also using DBA tools. DBA tools basically is uh, oftentimes called SQL uh, Server Management Studio via PowerShell. It's open source and free. It was created by Chris Lemaire, and this is also maintained by her, with Jess Pomfret and John Milton. It's uh, very powerful and very easy to use. I will show you in the next slide how it's, uh, this is done. Here I'm going to use the uh, TBA tools to restore basically the uh, uh, backups that we've already moved on the, the file store. So. We just uh, basically can say uh, backup TBA database SQL instance. And basically, it's like this, and we can use um, a lot of, of databases we can want uh, to, to uh, restore in one batch, basically. So it's, this is uh, very easy to, to, to use um, to, to uh, restore the databases. 
So I already mentioned before that basically if you um, have a VM, basically it's um, switched off or you deleted the VMs, then you don't pay for that resource anymore, basically, it's in, in normal um, circumstances, basically. So if you switch it off, basically, that, then it says you don't use the CPUs anymore, um, which means you don't pay for the CPUs and for the RAM because you only are using the, the, the space that you are basically hosting your VM on. That's what you will be paying. You can save money with that way. You can also say, I want to uh, on and off, uh, for example, the, the VM. Um, I want to have it uh, eight o'clock in the morning it started and shut it down in the, in the evening uh, or seven o'clock. So you save uh, the the time uh, you not using the, the the VMs. So you have saved money for that basically. You also, of course, can um, uh, do backups and restore uh, of, of a VM on a VM level. This is also possible too. This is also pretty quick uh, and it's also uh, let's say fairly cheap because it's um, you're also not using the the hot um, the, the hosting space, but the cold uh, the hosting space. So you also need less resources to 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 use it. So um, and you also can, can do it your power share. Any questions? We don't have any questions, but I can tell you that the audience is definitely engaged because I'm enjoying it. Yep. OK. Good. I'm just showing you the demo like I uh, promised. So here, basically, I'm starting with the, the uh, demo admin and the password. And the, that's what I'm doing already in Visual Studio Code. Um, this is also what I'm going to use later here to, to log in on the, in the browser. As you can see here is basically the, the browser. And I already clicked on the browser saying that I want to connect the, to the VM via as a bastion. So here I um, just have to, to use the credentials here again that I defined before. So at this point here, what we are seeing here, we are actually passed around the 20 minutes already. So it's just what we just see here, it's really a quick uh, fast forward to it. Um, what we see here next is basically a clipboard. So what you can do uh, on the VM is, is you can use a uh, text that you can bring from outside. However, unfortunately, you can't use uh, objects like a file or uh, pictures uh, that you can drag and drop which is why uh, at the beginning you have to, to use it with the Azure File Storage Explorer so you actually can bring uh, your, your data into uh, uh, the Azure. So it's, you have to have uh, the file store that you can in, in the, bring into the Azure environment. <coughs> Sorry. And here I just copied basically the, uh, the, the the, um, the scripts I would use, I actually also stored the, the, the scripts on the file storage. Of course, I could, could use um, this storage uh, um, for that. You just uh, run it basically and have to, you can hear the mounting first. And already installing it here, uh, for example, um, stuff like Duck Studio and uh, just the chocolate. So you say, at the first, you have to also set uh, the, the execution uh, policy of this um, PowerShell scripts uh, on the remote chain first. So you actually can also use the, the PowerShell scripts. And then we install Chocolati, and after the uh, Chocolati is being installed, we can use actually the, the Chocolati that way. If you have the need to restart the, the computer um, for some reason, 
then uh, you can actually do it just like that and wait until um, Azure Bastion is, is uh, reconnecting again. You don't have to use the restart the, the process. You just wait for it. And uh, you can also then work, continue work like this uh, here, just uh, uh, using DBA tools to restore uh, the, the data like this, uh, just uh, um, accessing basically um, um, a folder with uh, some backups. And here I'm showing that actually the install did work. I'm just uh, showing you a table, the, the first uh, table of uh, uh, wide world importance, basically. So that's how this works. At this point, any questions? No questions. Good. Now, pricing, pricing, everything comes to, uh, down to price, right? Uh, so firms uh, also have to compete on the market. And uh, pricing uh, is, is unfortunately rather complex. It has some reasons uh, because there are different price types you can pick from for VMs. Um, basically, the easiest and the standard one is, is pay as you go. That there is uh, something that is called the self virtual machine instances you can pick from uh, pop prices and uh, uh, bring your own li uh, license. I'm going to deep, uh, dive into this a bit. So also uh, depends on the hardware you pick. I already mentioned that before that you actually have a, it's quite a range of hardware you can pick from. Um, the, the price uh, could be from the, uh, around $3 to the, up to $16,000 per month. Um, so it's, this is actually really uh, on the hardware you pick basically and software lenses of course as, as well. So pay as you go is basically the standard. So it's just, uh, you pay basically uh, only what and when you use it. It can be uh, the cheapest one if you want to have something that you just want to try uh, and delete again, basically. Then you have basically just uh, this way, basically. It's uh, very easy to use, but it also could be um, the most expensive one if you uh, always use it basically if you want to use it use your solution the whole year on probably it's, it's not the best one because if you use it for a longer term then you want, might want to use another option but if you uh, delete a resource then you don't pay for the resource anymore right so it's, it's what i already said before uh, you really pay as you go so it's basically you pay only what on when you use uh, with reserved virtual machine instances, this is uh, quite different. So if you have a reserved um, instances, then you actually can uh, save money because you pay for longer term hosting, basically. So you really uh, can imagine as a hosting service that you pay um, because you pay for a long time already in uh, advance also. So um, Microsoft also knows how you are going to use the TV, basically. So, so how do you have the space? Uh, so the, you really reserve a space resource for you, basically, and it's cheaper. With hybrid, actually hybrid, that means if you have already um, an own license for SQL Server, then you can actually bring your uh, license into the SQL Server. So, because maybe you have a, a, com a bigger company, um, the, the co company has uh, several licenses, maybe is uh, not using a license at the moment. Then you actually can bring it into um, the, the, the Azure environment. So you actually can bring your own license. Then there's something special that is called spot pricing. This is a, a really for failure tolerant use cases. Um, if I remember it correctly, that means basically you have really uh, the possibility of sudden shutdowns. That means basically Microsoft can remove the resource from you for someone else, basically, because uh, another customer wants to use. Uh, the, 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 the resource. So basically, it can be a win-win situation. If you really can live with uh, with this kind of uh, uh, 
shutdowns and uh, failure, uh, you might face basically, I think in, within the 30 seconds, seconds or something like this, um, Microsoft can actually just warn you before that. And uh, if it's after the, the warning, it's, just, it's around 20 seconds or 30 seconds, um, it's really uh, really removed then the resource for, from you. Um, like I said, you can really save cost up to 90% of the less cost uh, as compared to the, the pay as you go. And it's ideal for students basically or just uh, play around or developer or something like this. Um, for me, it's kind of hard to see basically um, to see uh, a good real world production case for it. Microsoft says you also could use it for, for, for production, but for me, it, uh, in the database world, it's a bit hard to see a, a good case that, that you can use for spot pricing. So spot pricing also has uh, the possibility that you can actually say, I want to have um, uh, maximum pricing for the as a spot, that means basically, it's a, um, I want to have a threshold that I, I want to, to, to pay for, uh, but uh, it's once it exceeds because uh, a customer pays more than, than I am willing to, then actually um, the Microsoft can remove the, the resource. This is also a possibility, so you actually can also tweak this, this spot pricing uh, mechanism a bit more for you. Uh, bring your own license. I already said this. Basically, this is, uh, it could be useful if you have a license that you uh, bought already, but you don't use. So actually, you can also save money with that if you have uh, your own license that you already uh, own. Um, you also are able to scale it up or scale it up uh, down of our that machine, which I think is, is especially in the scenario that you want to have uh, more. Uh, control of, uh, on your virtual machine. This, this is actually something I think this is also um, very beneficial to, to have it in Azure because you, you really can say, I, I need uh, more power or I need less power for, for, um, for this, uh, the calculations at the moment. Um, imagine if you have to just to, to calculate something expensive, then you are, uh, only have to um, upscale it for some hours and you can actually just shut down again. Uh, all this is uh, downsized again, so you don't have to, to pay the whole um, month for, for example, 16,000 or for a massive parallel power you might not use, but just a few hours. Yeah, what you also can do, you can actually say, I want to have a, a, a budget uh, to limit the expenses. I will show you this uh, also. Um, so we actually have also a possibility to set up warnings. And I also uh, mentioned before that if you shut down a VM basically, then it uh, costs less because you don't use any CPU or RAM. You also can automate it. So the pricing um, here again, uh, you can actually set up uh, a budget. For example, we have, uh, for example, 200 Swiss francs. So I uh, had once as a budget for every month. And um, actually, the, the predictions uh, Azure makes here. You see basically a, a graphics that basically says um, what kind of of uh, um, uh, expense you have to expect for the whole month. It's there's a forecast. You see the linear forecast. Basically, of course, if you if you uh, jump up and down, that, that's, that's not possible because there's no linear forecast anymore. But, but if you have uh, just uh, for a day or two, you have uh, the the to be able to set up like this for a few days, basically, then it just calculates literally uh, up, and that's actually um, quite good. And in my opinion, that's actually something that. Uh, assumes more or less the worst can. So we actually you have a quite good overview on the price. So what does it mean if you have uh, a VM basically like I uh, said before for deployments? Um, you have, uh, for example, uh, 
it's uh, the deployment I would say before it's a D four as it's just a, just a general purpose uh, with uh, four uh, CPUs with uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM as uh, they have uh, storage like this. But the uh, on the I mean going uh, with uh, um pay as you go basically, then um I am basically paying uh, one hundred seventy dollars per month around that. If you, you go with um reserved uh, instance basically then you see you have a, a, a quite a, a cut off cost and if you go three years basically then this is even lower so you have uh, here you have uh, basically really a bit of this app uh, this is actually the app i talked about before basically so here you see also the, the cost that you might face uh, so it's, you also have uh, um, a bit uh, um, an overview of the cost, how this could be um, done for you. Again, here I want to show you again the, um, the, the overview. I said before uh, I was going to, to deploy a general purpose of it, basically uh, just uh, um, something that you could use for, I would say, normal databases, not the too big uh, databases. If you really want to have something bigger, basically with the uh, memory hypothesizing, for example, for uh, with the SSES or SAP ANA, for example, then you need something bigger, for example. So it's, um, you really have a quite a range of uh, of possibilities you can pick from. Yeah, this is a, a helpful uh, VM selector. As I said before, this is here again. This is a selector. And as a recap here, as we could see, actually with PowerShell, we can actually uh, a deployment of SQL Server uh, and as a VM with SQL Server and the uh, um, also, the uh, restoring of databases is, is fairly possible. So this is fairly easy to do. And um, yeah, you can use it from your desktop. So you actually most most of the stuff you don't need to do to inside of the VM. Of course, if if you need to install software inside of the VM, you uh, can actually do this inside of the VM. Of course, uh, chocolate on DBA two is a great table. So if you have a question now here uh, later or maybe tomorrow, just uh, feel free to contact me on this space.